<laughs> oh. <laughs> Already pieces are falling off. I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. Just go ahead. You didn't need that piece. Oh no. <laughs> Detach the next stage. Like yep. <laughs> Okay, maybe those were important. <laughs> <laughs>from the mun right that's, that's right we're, we're in space right now <laughs> we're on the mun yeah <laughs> that's what the that's what the screen shows yeah i have the uh, start screen open i just wanted to let everybody know that's watching uh who we have on tonight because uh squad has been very gracious to give us some of their time tonight to just talk about the new patch and we're gonna build some spaceships and blow them up and see what we can do yeah yeah it's gonna be awesome so yeah if you guys could uh felipe and max if you guys could introduce yourselves yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Felipe, uh, a.k.a. Harvester, and I'm the lead developer of KSP. And I'm Miguel, slash Max Mops, the uh, PR guy for Kerbal Space Program. The PR guy. So you're not you're not the normal PR guy that we've dealt with. You're the second PR guy that we've dealt with. So yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we sort of have uh, Bob and I, the guy who you already met, we sort of divvy up everything in what we do great, what we're not so strong with. Mm-hmm. And I'm sort of like the guy who deals with the social media side. And oh, the, perfect. Um, that's, yeah. tough, that's tough stuff to stay on top of. It's a lot to manage. Yeah, and contacting YouTubers and people like that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's definitely a so, time so job. Which, so which one of you guys got NASA to start using this program? Because <laughs> <laughs> whoever you are, you deserve a raise. I think that was entirely organic, <laughs> actually, which has us quite happy. Yeah, I, that kind of took us by surprise. I mean, um, we kind of hoped that were the case, but uh, we never really uh, <laughs> dared to hope. We didn't know until we saw the uh, the article. So it was really just uh, incredible. I mean, yeah, that's they awesome. They probably racked up a lot of hours while that. they were off from the government shutdown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What else are they going to do? <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we actually heard a comment about that, that we were the only space program running in North America. Since. <laughs> 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 and so, actually, I want to start off because this Kerbal Space Program is not a new thing. It's something that's been around for a really long time. It's something that I've been watching from afar because I've just been so scared to get into it because it's, <laughs> like t- it's like almost too excited. And from meeting you guys at PAX, I've, I've finally t- taken the plunge, and i got to say it's awesome. But, like... This has been in development for a long time. So, so, Felipe, exactly how long have you been working on this? Well, um, KSP got started in 2011, um, as in the game itself. But the idea for KSP has existed for over 10 years now, actually. Um, So, uh, basically, about 10 years ago, I was... I used to play this game with my friends which involved uh, actual fireworks and it was extremely reckless and dangerous and please no one tried this event. That sounds like how the many, best how, kind of game. How, how many G.I. Joe's were lost? That's <laughs> 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 the thing, we didn't uh, use G.I. Joe's as our uh, victims slash brave intrepid explorers. Um, we made little men out of tin foil, <laughs> just oh, uh, bending them and making them into little uh, humanoid shapes. And we strap them to their little uh, duct tape cockpits and send them off into the stars or, uh, <laughs> or accurately an early death. Into space or oblivion, whichever came first. Yeah, and uh, so those guys we called Kerbals. And this wasn't an idea for a game back then. It was just uh, this game we used to play because we were bored and had access to fireworks. And... Uh, uh, over time, as I grew up and went through college and, uh, and all that, I majored in game design. Um, this idea stuck with me as something that could be possibly made into a game one day. And uh, when I started working at Squad, I, I joined Squad doing uh, what Squad originally did, which are uh, interactive marketing installations and stuff like that. Yeah. So, basically... Um, those were really cool, but 
and almost video games, but uh, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to make video games. So one day, I uh, this is kind of the same story I told you guys at FedEx. And, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, we have we have to tell the story to the listeners, so. though. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, so basically, I went up to Adrian and Ezekiel from the company one day, and I told them just that, that I wanted to make video games. And that's what I was going after. And uh, I fully expected at that point to just hear, well, okay, good luck with all your future endeavors or something <laughs> along those lines. Some sort of brush off like that. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I fully expected that to be my last day at school. <laughs> and, um, but they completely blew me away when they said, okay, uh, if you bring us uh, a solid business plan and an idea for a game, then we'll make it happen. Wow. And uh, that was pretty incredible. And that's kind of how KSP got started. And uh, back then it was really a lot less ambitious. I mean, a lot less ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry if you said, what? Uh, like, when was this? This was back in 2000? That was in 2010. 10, okay. Yeah, and uh, about January 2011 was when we first uh, started developing uh, KSP itself as a game. So let me ask you this, because uh, the first comparison that I drew when I first saw this game was uh, Gary's Mod. Uh -huh. <laughs> have, have, you have you played any Gary's Mod? I play Gary's Mod a bit. I can't say I've played it a lot um, or in any sort of meaningful multiplayer session or anything of the sort. I, I don't but think I've... there are any meaningful multiplayer sessions <laughs> in Gary's Mod, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I play it a, uh, a bit, and it's cool that... Uh, Gary's Mod lets you do all this sort of uh, crazy stuff, and uh, I got into it a bit, but I didn't really, uh, I, I, did, I, I don't think I spent enough time playing it to actually uh, master the game and uh, get a, a grasp of everything you can do in it. Yeah. But uh, KSP, I think, uh, was kind of born already um, with more than just a physics sandbox box in mind. Uh, we wanted a game where you built your own rockets and spacecraft and sent them out into space. Right. And uh, that was kind of the, uh, that was the main premise. And uh, as the project evolved uh, over all of its updates, it picked up, I guess, uh, I guess you could say there was a lot of feature creep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Putting it mildly. Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> but that was kind of uh, one of the the results of the way we've been developing the game because back when we started because of the whole uh, way it happened I fully expected that uh, at any point Adrian or Ezekiel could call me and say okay well playtime's over come back to work <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the game was developed back then with this idea that uh, every update that we did could have been the last one so the game started out like really unassuming and uh, and unambitious. It was uh, even uh, at the start, it was just like a two D thing. It was constrained to it was three D but constrained to the uh, to a two D plane. Yeah. So kind of like two point five D, and it was um, at first it could have been something just as simple as uh, a game where you launched your rocket to see how high you can go, and it would have been just like a high score scheme. But uh, as we finished each update, we started getting new ideas and uh, like reviewing the game and seeing how that was working out and how it was playing and, uh, and, and trying out new things uh, on each update. And then uh, I guess that's kind of how it grew kind of organically into what it is today. I think that uh, if we had started out to do KSP uh, in its current form from the start, like with a big massive design document or something like that, then uh, we would still be back there somewhere trying to figure out where we got lost. Yeah, I find uh, Kerbal Space Program is interesting in that it, it seems to be following a trend of uh, a, a trend in these independently developed video games where they start off as an idea but slowly get fleshed out but have like enough of a following that people who are playing the game are okay with waiting to see what else the person making this game is going to do with it. Right. Something that, like, I, I think only, like, maybe five years ago would seem absolutely unthinkable, you know? 
Like yeah, you um, launch with a full game, and it's it's really impressive what this. Game, if, if it started off as like a two point five D game, it's really impressive to see where this has come. Well, yeah, it, uh, sometimes it, I I I get one of those like reality check moments where I say, "Oh wow, man! I mean, two years ago this was." A little game where you just put things together to see how high you could go, and we were happy that uh, <laughs> um, back then we were happy that there was uh, sound or <laughs> interface and stuff like that. And now we're doing all this uh, cool career mode stuff. And uh, the cool thing about it, though, is that uh, career mode, especially, um, is one of those things that's been like a dream that I, we wanted to implement. Uh, for so long now, and we finally get to do it. So it's really cool that um, to finally be able to work on that because up until uh, one or two updates ago, we were working on just the sandbox part. Right. So we were just building this space flight simulator, and KSP is more than just a space flight simulator, and that's not really the focus of the game. We're not after a hundred percent realism. What right. we want to do is. Uh, is have like an above average level of realism. I mean, we like to have like, the uh, accurate orbital mechanics and stuff like that, but we're not after um, like photorealistic spaceship simulator hardcore type thing, you know? Um, KSP is primarily a game. Right. And yeah. all these game ideas that we had um, for career mode and research and stuff like that, we're kind of pending, waiting on the sandbox to reach a state where we could actually start adding stuff to it. So it's been really cool on these last updates to see the game part of the game start to take shape. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, I think that's where I would like to, that's kind of what we're showing off today. And so uh, both Landon and I, Landon is the one who's streaming. So if everyone in chat wants to yell at anyone, yell at Landon for <laughs> doing things poorly. But so what we want to talk about is, uh, you know, a lot of the new features that are in here now. So now you, you have the same space, you know, when you look at the whole st your whole station, you can see all the different buildings, your research development, your space center, the construction buildings and stuff like that. But now the way it's set up right now is by doing flights, you unlock science or you get more science. Your yeah. and, and you use that science to unlock more new tech or more trees, which gets you more parts. And there's no money involved yet. It's still just like get the get the science to move forward. And um, even so far, it's funny watching Landon play because we were playing last night. But we are already going in very wildly different ways of like how we got our research and things like that. And so it's really exciting to see that even uh, yeah, Landon do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that looks <laughs> that that way. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> But it's it's exciting to kind of already at this point, like with even like two branches unlocked, how different of spaceships we can be making. Oh, that is very nice to hear. Um, that's one of the things that we wanted to have in the game um, in in whatever way possible. Uh, uh, it's something that uh, I think uh, the thing with career mode is that uh, is, uh, a lot of people thought that uh, when we added career mode, the game would feel restrictive and stuff like that. But having a tech tree and being limited to uh, a small set of parts to do something uh, forces you to think uh, about different solutions to solve a problem. For instance, how do you get to the moon when you only have like level three uh, technology? And that was something kind of unexpected because uh, I don't think even we expected uh, it to work the way it does. And it's just really cool to see it develop like that. And uh, I think that, if anything, career mode might actually make the game more creative because it uh, it challenges you to come up with creative solutions. Um, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Like, like limited options. And so I'm very happy to see that's actually happening in the game because it's really um, the feel of uh, what we wanted the game to uh, convey, I think. Because uh, if you think about it, for instance, uh, the Apollo missions, they went to the moon with less technology than what we have in uh, a pocket calculator these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, the, you could say they were, they were a couple of uh, tech, level, tech tree tiers behind what, they, what you'd expect them to be <laughs> to get to the moon, but they pulled it off anyway. Yeah, so that's awesome. That's really awesome to hear. And actually, we finally have uh, another member of Squad to join the call. And so, uh, Chad, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone that's watching? Hello, how's it going, everyone? It's going well. We're talking. We're watching Landon build a rocket, which I don't. I 
I have to say my rocket building t skills are way better yeah, than when Landon's, you when you say rocket. Just... I think there's kind of an implied asterisk after that. <laughs> <laughs> like it I is am, cylindrical. And... There may be fire inside of it. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> there's so many rockets on this. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. It's are, definitely are you... a creative design. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Chad, yes, it is. I was gonna say, Chad, please, but please let me know that you're watching this. How, <laughs> I'm how watching. much? I'm, um... How much head shaking is happening right now? <laughs> I, I will. I will say that I've spent uh, a, a quantity of a few days playing, so I am a structural engineer to that degree of, of playing for <laughs> several hours. Uh, I didn't get a chance to watch all of the, the, the there's massive tutorials and YouTube videos and all of those things uh, to kind of like give you and then you guys have a community website where people can just upload some of their creations for people to download which is awesome right which is we'll, we'll be getting to that later because i want to i want to download some of those creations and see if landon can actually yeah, wield in, them in the meantime i'm enjoying watching our on run here uh, take a crack at it <laughs> oh there it goes. Oh, it's going up uh-oh uh-oh <laughs> Oh, it's unstable. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> eject! Oh, I can't eject! Yeah, you're not ejecting from solid rockets. <laughs> yeah, you can. Oh, wow. <laughs> if there's a survival, that's one really expensive carnival ride. <laughs> there we go, all good. <laughs> Oh man! So Chad, what do you? What, what's, what's your job on the project? A crew report. Well, I'm a, a technical artist, so I do a lot of. Well, it really depends on what needs to be done each update, but I do art assets, implementation of things, uh, coding a lot of the part module logic um, that makes things go. Basically, like the parachutes or the wheels and things like that. Which Landon is. Enjoying at this very moment. Right, yeah. <laughs> the parachute saved his life. Awesome. Um, and so, when did you come on to the project? Oh well, it's been it's been a while now. Um, I think uh, I came on shortly after the public release of that. I'm terrible with dates, so perhaps <laughs> uh, the exact time is not the best thing to ask for me. But uh, it's, been, <laughs> it's been a while. And how long actually? Several how, updates. How long has it been out on Steam now as part of early access? Because it was out for a while before getting picked up by Steam. Correct? It was like you could actually go and get it from your own from the the, the, the Kerbal Space Program website, and it was then it was brought to Steam later. And so, how long has it been on Steam? Um, can I take that? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, um, we've been on Steam since March this year, and uh, but we've been uh, KSP has been publicly available since July 2011, in fact. So uh, before Steam, we were already published for about a year and a half, I think. And uh, but Steam really was um, a massive thing for us. I was I mean, gonna say, like, how much did that change it for you guys? Like, how much did that like? I guess give you the like the wind to kind of carry on and move forward and like doing the career mode. That seemed to probably be like the biggest thing, the one of the biggest contributors to towards that. Well, um, I don't know in terms of uh, how Steam would relate to features we're actually adding to the game, but uh, it's definitely been like the biggest uh, boost to uh, to drive KSP forward that we've ever had, especially. Uh, the summer sale that was just incredible right yeah so. and now and now and again I, i'd like to, to get back to talk to more about what the career mode is because it's it's the beginning of actually really to shape it into a proper game and like i said so so far the way it works is you are basically piecemeal uh parts of a of rocketry in that you need to start collecting research by getting crew reports then you get the goo and you got to observe goo at multiple stages oh. in flight or in space and things like that, and then all that's more and more and more. And so and what down we go again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, lawn dart space. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, what you guys are roughing out basically is this way of kind of building this texture. And what you have is like a really nice rough sketch, I feel, of like kind of what you want to start to accomplish in the career mode. But what with what you have now, kind of what was the first goal for this first I guess wave in the update 2.2 for the career mode. Like, what all did you want to start getting people to see? Well, I think the the main like primary goal for uh, for the point 22 update at least was to have a a, a game mechanic to which, which players can discover the game. Mm -hmm. Because uh, up until now, uh, in sandbox mode, we have about uh, almost 170 parts now. So 
uh, if you guys played before in sandbox mode, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. It's yeah. a lot, isn't it? You get really uh, daunted by the amount of possibilities and not knowing what uh, each little thing does, and that's a bit of a recurring theme we've been seeing from everyone who picked up the game to play for the first time that they were getting completely like um, overwhelmed by the amount of content. Yeah, Landon, Landon you should go show the uh, just show the sandbox mode just because you can get in there and see it just to see all yeah, of I'll the back stuff. Up. Yeah, <clears throat> continue, Felipe, please. So, okay, <laughs> so yeah, and uh, so we were getting like increasingly concerned with the entry barrier to the game, and we were seeing a lot of comments from people saying, "Well, I want to get into this game, but it seems like it's too much for me, and it, it seems like it's." Uh, it's something they really have to like get into and spend some time like nerding out to figure everything out. Mm -hmm. And so the main purpose of career mode was to introduce the game more gradually to players. So now when you sit down to play uh, and you start a career mode um, save, you get this. Uh, you get like maybe five or six parts. So it's much easier to figure out where everything goes and what connects to what and. Um, how engines and fuel tanks need to be uh, uh, assembled together and all that. And you, gra you gradually get a grasp on how everything works. And the idea is that uh, as you collect uh, data from experiments and you turn them into science and you progress through the tech tree, uh, you unlock a couple of parts at a time and it gives you a much better uh, way to uh, to absorb all of that information because, uh, well, I'm looking at you playing right now in career mode. Yeah, look and at you... that list. There's so much. <laughs> like, I, I don't even know what to pick. I just see all of these pieces that I want to just jam together like Lego blocks. <laughs> yeah. Wait, and so... uh, it's the same feeling, or at least very similar to that. You know how you have, when you have like a big box full of Legos, like assorted Legos, and you're trying to build something, <laughs> and you have all of those parts, and they all look like something. And they eventually end up changing what you wanted to build just because you found a cool part that you wanted to use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's per yeah, absolutely. So Sandbox was starting to feel a bit too much like that. So we wanted to do something about that. So uh, Career Mode is primarily meant to introduce the game to new players. and But it's, at the same time, uh, also just the first step in Career Mode right? Uh, with research and development and all that. Um, so right now, the only currency you have in the game is science. So you do experiments, you gather data, and data can then be turned into science. And uh, that's then used to unlock parts on the tech tree. And that's something we chose to do it like this because we wanted it to... Um, we wanted it to give you as much freedom as possible to choose where to go next. So some people uh, commented saying that they well, they felt like uh, if you do a lot of uh, aerodynamics research, you should progress only into aerodynamics. But that's, I think, one of those points where uh, gameplay uh, supersedes realism. Because you need to have the freedom to select your own course. and. Running experiments gives you science, and you can then use that science or apply it to do anything you want. Absolutely. So you're free to choose your path, and um, the tech tree was designed to so that uh, it's kind of got two extremes on it. Right. So the top end is all about rocketry and going larger, and the bottom end is all about science and precision, and uh, that's a really interesting thing. <laughs> <laughs> This is our blender this is model. Like, this is like Landon's trying to troll you. You're trying to tell all this information <laughs> to make as dumb as a looking thing as possible just to break your concentration. <laughs> oh my god. It's That's all not about work. creativity. It's basically what Landon's trying to Launch say. it. We'll see if it applies. <laughs> <laughs> so I need, I need to connect this whole shuttle to uh, something, but I'm just. But this I is the first time I've really gotten like the sandbox. All the parts and you still don't have any engines on. So <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was saying about sandbox being. <laughs> right. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, and you, and you start to do that because with um, within the career mode, you, you have like su such a limited start of, of tools, and you get to kind of expand. And then not only do you get to expand, but you get to see what those parts are for because they're based underneath those those general labels of like, hey, this is more rocketry, so this is more for like going up, or this is more safety things, so this is more for coming down and not dying. And uh, okay. and so you kind of start getting those ideas, but still, it's um, it's still in a rough, it's still in like a rough shape because it's you're. 
there are so many stats on all the different parts, and it, I, I feel like there's not. Uh, I, I have such a hard time digesting like all the difference between between this engine and that engine and this thing. Or, like this is more rocket fuel. I understand that, but what's this, what's like the real difference between these engines? And is that stuff that you guys plan on addressing? You know, as you Actually, move forward with the. Very interesting that you career. brought that up because that's uh, one of the key things that I were planning. Nice. For, uh, just a very. This very wasn't rehearsed, guys. I, this is a, I'm just asking <laughs> a question. They didn't tell me that. They don't. Hey, make sure you ask us about all the numbers. Yeah, this is a standoff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is something actually. Uh, I said on the uh, the latest uh, dev vlog we did. I saw. Uh, I said that I was really happy to see the way people uh, received uh, research and development and their the feedback that they uh, that they gave us because it's. Uh, it's not all praise. It's not as if everyone was saying like, "Hey, good job! It's perfect." <laughs> it's, uh, much on the contrary, uh, everything that the people are asking for right now is very much in line with the things that we want to add. So right. that's really great. I think that uh, you know you're on the right track when people are clamoring for the same features that you're working on, trying to add as soon as possible. So actually, let's, actually, let's, let's change this up for a moment. So what's since Landon's building the rockets and he's still really early on, why don't we do a thing where we have the chat and you guys guide him on building? <laughs> yeah, I need as much rocket. advice as possible. He Sounds help. good. He needs as much help as possible. So I don't know if uh, Chad, maybe you want to take the reins and help Landon build a rocket and maybe ask the chat every once in a while for what he needs. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could certainly do that. Um, what, what's your goal here? What are you trying to do? Exactly? So uh, so far, I've been building rockets that get me kind of high up in the atmosphere but not to the point where i am kind of like going in an orbit of any kind okay and i just unlocked a couple tech tree nodes so i have the capability to get some better rockets but i haven't experimented enough with them to know what's good and what's bad so one thing i notice is that you're having a lot of trouble with your rocket kind of tipping over yeah there are engines that are gimbaled and what that means is that they can actually move the thrust in different directions to help you maintain control of the mm. ship. So I would probably go with the... <clears throat> uh, up there on the engines looks like probably the second one. It'll actually say thrust vectoring enabled. And that one will allow you to actually have a lot more control over oh, your perfect. rocket. And that's liquid fuel, so you'd be using the kind of the gray liquid tanks. The problem with the big rocket boosters that you have is that once you light them, there's no throttle control, mm. and they're basically burning until they run out of fuel. So if you get in a situation where you flip over, you're basically at the mercy <laughs> of the very large rocket underneath of you. You're just riding a missile at the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you are another a little piece of advice. I noticed that uh, you were uh, plugging your... Um, your mystery goo containers on the rocket itself. Yeah, yeah I, I, I used to have that on know, another canister area. I corrected him last night, and he's not <laughs> doing it. I taught him about he needs to keep the goo. The goo's important. You can't put that to the rocket because you're going to lose Yeah, that. I saw them falling, and I saw him just yeah, right picking them. Data, he's trying to get that so, uh, desperate it's data. It's worthless if you just drop it in the ocean. You need to recover it. So, it <laughs> so remember, we could go get that strut. you got to build that structural beam and then put all the goo on there. That's yeah. what I did. Uh, what I usually do is this: just uh, attach the, the goo canisters to the pod directly. Yeah, oh, you yeah. have access to that all the time. You just put, like, keep you put, like, near the pod, on there. so <laughs> when you land, and it's just the pod and the chute. The canisters are still attached. But you, but like that's not enough goo. I, I try to I get all that goo. Look, look at all that goo. <laughs> so that way you get all this research. So I so get like the, right, right there. Actually, yeah, I was going to mention, don't get too attached to that uh, strategy because that's going to change. I, I, oh, I, I, I absolutely know it's going to change, but I'm going to abuse the shit out of it right now. Oh Use it while you We've have already, it. We've uh, already isolated a couple of uh, places where people have been uh, well, gaming the system, I guess you could put it like that. And uh, we're, we've designed a couple of new mechanics and tweaks to make it more interesting and more challenging. So... Uh, repeating experiments now is going to be uh, a lot more interesting, you think. <laughs> Man, and you got, what are you, are, 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 are you guys helping him? It doesn't sound like you guys are helping him. He's still doing something. I'm something. just watching with a kind of perplexed look on my face. <laughs> it's, yeah, we're enjoying the spectacle more than helping, really. <laughs> Help this man, please. Look, I, I am building a symmetrical spaceship with lots of rockets. <laughs> what more do you need? This is how not NASA did it, right? <laughs> See, I, ideally, you want to have the the goo containers be intact when you land, so you can get the science out of them. Yeah, so I, I've got like ten of them up here. 
So what you can what you can do as a little trick is you can put the parachutes on that frame down there, and you can probably with say like four parachutes land slow enough to to not actually destroy the ship. Yeah, you're. I think you have too much mass now. You might need more shoots. <laughs> the chat is uh, yeah. yeah, yeah that's that's right what the chat's that. saying. The chat's saying you might be weighing too much with all that goo. <clears throat> so this this seems like this engine is just like trouble. <laughs> this massive yeah. thing. Later on, you'll get uh, side-mounted decouplers, and those are really good for those because then you can jettison them off to the sides. When they're underneath you like that, it's a dangerous proposition if things mm. go wrong. Yeah, you're basically sitting on a cannonball, and that's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> typically for it's like just going to go one core, direction. Typically for the core, you want to use liquid fuel, like those FL T400 tanks. Like I put a bunch of those under there, and then I'd put the gimbaled engine on there as well. And that would be kind of your primary rocket because you want to use the solid fuel boosters mm -hmm. to kind of lift you up. And then you would traditionally just jettison them or get rid of them. And then you use your liquid fuel and you can have a lot of fine control when you're up there in higher orbit or in the atmosphere. Got it. So right now I've been basically only been working with two stages uh, for these launches. How do I add more stages? Is that just part of the decou decouplers or is yeah, there yeah so you could put i know this is something that i found out so i'm gonna even i'm gonna answer this question because i know um <laughs> you can put decouplers below engines or below like where the actual firing is so like, if you put like so you put that canister underneath and you put an engine underneath that then you put a decoupler underneath that and then do another like tank and engine on, underneath that so you can like do multiple stages of rockets and as you lose one so when i got all the way up in space then it had like two extra rockets, so I could just zip around up there for a little while, <laughs> and then make sure I make made it back to Earth. <laughs> that doesn't the, the sound very good, though. Is to get as much fuel as possible up into the ap upper atmosphere, because if right. you have a lot of fuel up there, you can really get around. Right. Because so, if you oh, drop cool. all the weight of the engines and the tanks that you use to get up to space, then you can really kind of jet around. Exactly, precisely. And so that's what I that's what I did. So that, look at that, Orlando. Now you got a now you got a two stage rocket. Sweet. Well he, he needs a fuel tank, not a not another decoupler. Right. Like, yeah. He's got that yeah, he's got he's got got just an engine <laughs> attached to an engine. <laughs> Don't tell him that. It's fine. <laughs> this thing's not going anywhere. So you recommended this one fuel of the tank. Things that I like about uh, KSP and the way it, it does things, at no point the game tries to prevent you from making something that completely doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do have to ask the question though. Is that something that you think would be? I mean, if you like, because I know I don't know if you ever played this game. Um, it's uh, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> I've heard a lot about it, but never really played it. All right, so anyhow, because I think they had some pre-request -re things. So like, if it didn't have a wheels, or it didn't have like a a prop engine, or if it didn't have like a helicopter blade, like you couldn't save it because it's like, what the hell is this? This isn't even a <laughs> thing. What are you doing? <laughs> So yeah, um, this is something that uh, when we started KSP, we wanted uh, already from the start to make it so that at no point will the game try to uh, prevent you from making something that won't work. Right. Okay, so it it would actually be possible for us to detect, like run some sort of routine to analyze your ship and say, well, this doesn't have an engine or this engine isn't going to light, so you probably don't right. want to launch that. <laughs> but it's something we want players to learn from their own failures. So this right. is also why uh, in the game there there are no random, um, nothing is really random about it. There's no random failure, nothing that um, there has like this um, uh, dice throw chance of exploding or something. Yeah, because I think smart. I think that uh, anything that should that can go wrong with your mission should be something that you have the power to do something yeah, about. Yeah, Landon, you did it! <laughs> Woo! Oh, there you go. See? Double rockets! Well, it's going up. Yeah. That's... Yeah, see, that's how you do it. Now just do that, like, do five stages. <laughs> yeah, right, right, just stack all on top of each other. Do, 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 go back to that original design where you had, like, the four rockets out, and then you <laughs> two stages on that. <laughs> and yeah, basically, that's a big thing about KSP. Uh, even in the careful design, you you can see that they don't. Oh, what done? Uh, <laughs> Get rid of that you rocket. You can see that the guys are, like, kind of destructible and overall they right they're sort of meant for you to be okay with losing a couple every now and then not a lot eventually <laughs> career mode with, with, that's gonna matter <laughs> but i wouldn't say failure is encouraged but we're not gonna we're not gonna really beat you up over failing right i think but i think i mean i think that's especially for for how 
deep the systems are in Kerbal, I think that's awesome. I think that, I don't think you, I think you guys are hundred percent correct in like going that way because it, it allows you to really just to just play and just to learn by doing. And I think that's something that I enjoy a lot out of it. I mean, it is definitely daunting, but I think it's like I wouldn't want it any other way because then it would feel almost too restrictive or would be like forcing me to play. They want me like, the way he wants it to. Because like, I mean, I've seen Landon just from like, again, in the past from our days playing, I've seen him do some really dumb things and it was really <laughs> funny. It would not have been possible otherwise. I'm so worried about the weight on the parachute right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> I am excited. I'm it's going to crash. I definitely want to <laughs> stop time working before you open the chute. <laughs> yeah, I start bring it. Yeah. That's, you should probably yeah, exactly. nope. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Alright, now somebody so go actually, out with a spatula and clean up all the science. Right. <laughs> because there's still science to be used. There's go get plenty it. of science out there. <laughs> yeah. So I have a I have a I have a small question to ask about the future of career mode. And so one thing that we talked about before is that, you know, you wanted to kind of feel like you're actually, you know, starting your own space program. And that's kind of like the one of the big things like that, that feeling of, you know, you're doing the cable space program. So you're going to go through the whole thing. You're going to get to the get to the moon. You're going to have your own space stations out in the outer space. However, I want to know, is there going to be a rival space power? Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Is there a Kerbal Soviet Union? I have to know. <laughs> We have, I think, Felipe, we've actually talked about maybe in the long term having, uh, like, if there's some sort of time challenge or something, having another agency beat you to it, but nothing too deep, right? Yeah, I think for now, the main thing with, uh, currently at least, for uh, for career mode is to make the game uh, into a tycoon type thing, um, where you play uh, your own, uh, as you, you play as, like, director of your uh, own space agency. And it's not really uh, so much about competition, because um, I think there, there, it's pretty challenging enough as it is <laughs> uh, just to uh, overcome like the challenge of uh, going to, into space and stuff like that. So uh, if eventually we might get around to adding that, but um, at the moment the current focus is to just uh, um, do career mode and. Uh, uh, and wrap up all of this uh, tycoon type. Yeah, layer. Um, awesome. No, actually, another question I have is like, so you have you right now you have the two hangars and you have the two major launch sites, but like, is it possible like to build a launch site on the moon? Uh, currently, no, but I, I'm almost sure there is a mod that. That's yeah, unique. there there's a mod that lets you set up a launch pad wherever you can land it. So. Oh, awesome. It's <laughs> pretty that's, cool. That is really cool. Let's see how this goes, guys. I, I like that it is teetering back and forth. I know, that's, a <laughs> that's a good sign that it's already teetering. Great sign. Oh, I yep. forgot to turn on stable oh, stability. Yep. That's in the limits of that flexibility right there. <laughs> yep. now that I Let's hit, see if it pans out. Yeah, hit R too. Keep your rotation. Keep everything under control. We'll watch hey, the look at that. Remarkably stable. Yeah. It says gimbaled engines. That's where it's at. <laughs> it's working out for me. And so that's another cool thing is that you guys just let's talk about that for a little bit the the mods right so the the modding support for for Kerbal like what I think that's really awesome that you guys started with that as part of the plan that yeah mods why not yeah um, I think that um I mean for for me at least modding is how I got into game design in the first place I mean I started out doing uh, uh, Repaints for games like The Sims and stuff like that, and just doing like retextures of stuff, and then moving on to bigger things like uh, on Flight Simulator, I would do um, aircraft add-ons, and uh, so this is kind of how I got started in getting into game design and thinking about game design as a career option, and uh, when. I finally got the opportunity to make my own game. I thought it would only be fair to uh, make the game as open to modding as possible. And I think for KSP, it works out uh, even uh, better because uh, we knew from the start that when we were making KSP that we had more ideas than we had the manpower to implement. <laughs> so we wanted to make it as open to modding as possible from the start. So um, from the very first public release, KSP was already able to load uh, custom content. And back then, it was just loading new models for parts and letting you tweak like um, uh, definitions and config files. But uh, eventually, one 
one community member uh, came to us one day and he sent us a message saying, "Well, uh, hey guys, I decompiled your game, and now I've uh, I've injected this code that loads custom." Um, DLL assemblies and stuff like that, and now you can program your own mods, and then we hired him. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a reasonable response. <laughs> that's awesome. I think that, that's that's really incredible that you guys actually did that. I mean, because I mean, we I mean it's so funny because. I used to do like I used to make maps for you know for Half Life and stuff like that, and the modding community is such a large thing, and I feel like it's kind of fallen off with the rise of like the indie scene. Like the modding community is kind of like focus, like kind of fallen even further from the limelight, but it's still happening. There's still people out there that are doing all this really awesome content, you know, for games. Yeah, I think that uh, it's something that's really like intrinsic to PC gaming that people want to modify their games. Uh, from very simple things like just uh, repaint or, or something, or a CFG tweak, um, to re really elaborate uh, creations and total conversions of the game even. And um, I think it's a shame if a game doesn't support that because it's, uh, it's a lot of wasted potential, I think. Right. Because um, one of the really cool things is, about a PC game is that... Uh, uh, Monitors will stop at nothing to make it happen the way they want it to happen. So, uh, for instance, we never planned for the game to support custom coded assemblies and stuff like that. And uh, that's something they figured out a way to make it happen. So, um, oh, this is going actually really nicely. I'm following. <laughs> yeah, you to turn off time warp. X one before you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Parachutes and time warp are not good friends. Also, you may want to eject that little bit of. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Progress. Parachute, buddy. Hit where, 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 Come on now. Basically, yeah, open it. Open it now. It'll slow you down, so you're not just plummeting oh, into oh the earth. God, last minute. It's Landed. still not open. Why is the parachute not open? There we go. There we go. There you go. <laughs> If you open up the if the parachute opens and it's going too fast, it'll rip off. Also, was your pot? Were you like trying to make it look like a teapot? <laughs> <laughs> it turns out. I was curious. <laughs> That's absolutely what happened. So, uh, would you guys be opposed to someone say modding in there and putting in like mechs, like like a like a Have Gundam fight in space? The Kerbal space program. Can, can we get some Pacific Rim in here? Yeah. yeah. Where's the kaiju? You know, Somebody actually built a Pacific Rim robot Jigger, in the yeah. game, oh. and they, it was in, incredible. The thing was even more massive than the buildings in the game. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, they called it Chibsy Danger. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And so, actually, we should do this. Um, what's we? Uh, what's uh, let's get the link to your site and put that in the chat. The most people party here have already gotten it, but we should make sure everyone knows where to go to pick this game up because you can. This is something you can buy. You can just buy this right now and start playing it, and you can start making better ships than Landon because anyone can make yeah. better ships and start <laughs> going up into space and catching some science. And actually, some, you know. actually, what I would love to do right now is there are you guys. We can download rockets, right? We can download rockets from the site for Landon to try and shoot up and to see in the game. Is that possible? Yeah, and from Spaceport. Uh, yeah, should, uh... yeah, Landon, why don't we show off Spaceport? Sure. Um, I don't know if I can... Give me one second, I gotta set in up the, the stream for that. the main menu on the game, you have the uh, Spaceport button. If you just click that, it'll take you straight up to... See, Landon, just, uh... that's simple. He just told you how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> of course, nobody on the stream can see this unless I switch over to... <clears throat> Yeah, just just switch it. But turn it on so we can, everyone can see your, hop, your, your bookmark bar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see what see what nonsense you're up to. <clears throat> well, everyone's well. Well, Landon's getting the screen set up. Uh, let's let's keep talking. So, Russ, what kind of what kind of ship do you want to see Landon try to fly? Uh, I guess we could be browsing I, too right now. I mean, I want to I want to see if anybody has loaded in a Star Trek. Ship. I I ha I have a favorite, by the way, in Spaceport called Mister Rocket. Just look it up. It is gloriously ugly. <laughs> All right. I think, All right. Yeah, I think we have a winner. Have a winner. I think that's a winner. <laughs> Mr. Rocket, huh? Yeah, look at him. It is... Wow, it's just... I, I'm not sure if it's up to the latest uh, version of KSP, but I can assure you Mr. Rocket is a sight to behold. Uh, just scroll down, you. <laughs> just... Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, a, let's it's, see if we can... it's a short delay, so... Give you'll, rec you'll recognize it. It is... Wow, just... Okay. <laughs> is Mr. spelled out? <laughs> no, just MR Rocket. Look at these ships! This is so cool. Yeah, it's like, really cool. Like, 
How often do you guys just stop working on the game and come to Spaceport and geek out? Just be like, look at all these nerds! Look at all these nerds making rockets for us! We are no one to call anyone. There you go! Oh, I, I, no, I, I, when I call people nerds, that's coming from a place of love. Oh, yeah, because no, I'm a nerd. Oh, I, I'm, I'm the biggest praise. nerd. I'm here geeking out, <laughs> looking at. What is this rocket? What is this? <laughs> it's Mr. Rocket. What is that? I've never seen that either. Land and get it, launch it, let's do this. Well, the installation's a, a couple step process. Yeah, we'll do the steps. Come okay. on. <laughs> What's the problem? Mr. Rocket is apparently an experiment to build the most uh, diverse <laughs> rocket while still keeping it balanced and uh, aiming up. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that last part. I, I don't. Critical. I don't believe either of those last two statements. Ah, uh, yeah. If you try to open a, a ship that has parts that you don't have currently researched in career mode, it's gonna say uh, the ship contains invalid parts, and it's oh, not I gonna see. let you load it. Otherwise, it would just give people um, uh, a cheater. too easy a way around right. career. You, know? <laughs> you could just uh, start a sandbox game, build a massive starship, and then load it up in career and cheat your way into uh, the furthest reaches of the solar system. So here's Mr. Rocket. <laughs> oh, God. oh man! Oh boy! I was. Oh wow! <laughs> I have been told it's stable, but oh my God! All right. All right, let's launch it. Launch that thing. That is. Um, wow, I'm speechless. <laughs> yeah, you guys hear that? The maker of the game, the guy who created this game, is. Oh, speechless it's so wiggly! Oh man! All right, uh, s stability. I only hope that the creator of this <laughs> Oh God, we, we oh. just loaded in to see it, oh my God. Why does it have a shuttle on the side? <laughs> <laughs> Way out here. Is that from where you control it? All right, Landon, throttle up. Let's get this sucker <laughs> off the ground. Let's do this. Ooh, why not, man? Whoa. Here we go. Oh my god. <laughs> it's actually stable. Oh my god, what? <laughs> what is I like how everything's this? jiggling and like wiggling. What am I looking at? We're starting to overheat. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, they say. <laughs> I Carry trust up. them. I think it's a good thing that only a few of your engines are overheating. Um, wow. Maybe it's planned, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's planned. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't wait to see all the stages go off. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder what happens yeah. next. I'm so excited. It's going to be indistinguishable from it failing. I think is the problem. It's like, is everything going as planned, or is it falling apart? <laughs> it's going up perfectly straight. That's the thing. I don't understand how this is possible. Everything's Quick, wiggling around. I know. I like how. It's and, uh, if you look at the SAS thing, it's barely correcting. It's actually very stable. <laughs> what? Alright, is this, is this making you guys mad? Like, I mean, this, should, this shouldn't be working. Please. <laughs> yeah. There's someone skinned the system. We have to go back and break this. There's a bug in the game. This works. No, 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 here's the thing. That person has to know enough about the game to add all those parts in the right places and still have balanced thrust. Look at how the fuel is depleting at the exact same time on all those engines despite their, consider, uh, their configurations. And he's using all types. I know, that's so <laughs> crazy. That's so incredible. I don't... All right. I don't understand. Looks like you can actually get to orbit as well. That's the stunning thing about all this. I, yeah, you, you might want to start tipping towards your 90 degree angle to... Uh, Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's so <laughs> so I, uh, Mr. Rocket Ship's up there. How do I Wait, switch to... Why, why are you looking at the stage that went down? There you go. Understand. You need to fire the next set of engines. You're gonna fall from the. Uh, you're gonna fall from orbit. Oh, he's, he switched to the other rocket. Yeah. Wow! Look at it go. <laughs> yeah, you may want to go back to Mr. Rocket. I'm, I'm honestly. Yeah, you want to turn those engines back up as fast as you can. Wow. Yeah, Mr. Rocket actually had a whole other set of engines you didn't even ignite yet. Oh, so jeez. Probably still keep going. Yeah, get back to the other ship. Get back to the other ship. Wait, I don't know if you may have what. Like, yeah, the brackets aren't working. I think they're now. blown up. Yeah. yeah, I think you might have actually lost it. Way to go, Landon. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> I didn't realize it. Nice should we should we restart and do it again? I can speed up time. 
<laughs> yeah, you can restart and then. Yeah, let's just, yeah, just sure revert. I want to see line. everything that it has. She totally put a Kerbal in there, so that's pilotable. I would suggest adding some sort of scientific equipment to that thing, but it just has to be like so delicately balanced that any addition to it would probably make it crumble. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, all you have to do is hit escape and then go back to launch path. Yeah, you revert to you can revert flight to launch. This is gonna take a while to come down. It did come up with quite a bit of thrust. <laughs> and there's also no pilot in there, so it's just gonna be fluttering down until it hits the ground. Oh, <laughs> already pieces are falling off. I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. Just go ahead. No, you, you didn't need that piece. Oh no! <laughs> Detach the next stage. Yep. <laughs> Okay, maybe those were important. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's cover that. Survived. All right, go to the next ship. If people want to see, if people want to see, we'll leave a little bit to the imagination yeah. for what happened. You, you guys should <laughs> all go get that, Mr. Rocket. Yeah. That's Mr. Rocket, everybody. Let's get that Enterprise up there. <laughs> yeah, the Enterprises are on the left. They're actually uh, a fully Pieces. contained part. So, oh, yeah, wow. You, okay. If you do new craft, then you can just drag one of them in from the left there. Okay. They're in the top corner. They're not actually vessels. Oh, they're parts. Just vessels. Yeah, yeah. So, so hit cancel and then do new ship and then just grab one of them from over there on the left. Oh. Just drag it on in. It's so big. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, I can't place no. it. Yeah, apparently they come in. According to the mod, they come in different sizes. You may so you may want to try pulling out of uh, like that one's on realistic scale. So you may want to pull another piece. <laughs> oh I, my I, goodness! I think you're doing this exactly right. <laughs> oh my! Is it halfway in the ground? No. <laughs> <laughs> Throttle up! Go! 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 Throttle up! Before it falls down. Fully go where no one's Engines! Engines! Quickly, Scotty! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, wow. What is happening? <laughs> it's heating up from going so it's fast. so fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is in? What are those engines? What, what did the resources say at the bottom left? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you are going so fast, it's ridiculous. <laughs> no. Let me slow it down a little bit. That's probably good. I don't know what direction you're even pointing at this point. <laughs> Marty. Like loops. <laughs> well, look, at, look at where you're going. Just zoom out. See how much thrust you already put out. Just keep zooming out. Keep zooming out. You're, you're on like an escape trajectory right now. <laughs> We're yeah, five. Oh, man. That little bus is sending you out into the sun. <laughs> wow. Well, let's do oh, a maneuver man. and get back to the moon, right? Oh, you're more than halfway to the moon already, and this is real time. You haven't warped yet, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can warp? Wait, there's a warp? Uh, no, no, time warp. Time warp, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Right-click the ship, see if there's any extra functions on it. I wonder... Plays off. Yeah, that is. Oh yeah, look at that. They have all sorts of stuff. So judging by the fact that this thing is just spinning around in space, I'm guessing inertial like dampers or whatever <laughs> they call it on the show probably not part of the design. <laughs> What's my speed? I'm probably. Oh, wow. oh my god, I am going so fast. <laughs> so hurling through space what a cool right now. Things about uh, the way the parts are designed now. Um, uh, all of uh, last year, mostly we've been. Um, doing this massive overhaul in the way the parts are coded, and they're now all coded as modules. So, for instance, uh, uh, the bit of code that does the engine functionality is a module, and it can be combined with other uh, bits inside the same part. So you can actually have a, uh, an entire ship that's a single part, like this one, and uh, it all kind of works together because of the new modular system. So that's one of the cool things that we've uh, been able to do uh, only in the last updates. And it's one of the things we're uh, really excited to see that it's possible. And wow, that is an amazing <laughs> amount of thrust. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going completely the other way. 
Yeah, That's well, <laughs> you are from. <laughs> this is a ship from the future, so I kind of understand, I guess. It's not much I can. Yeah, I love that you're trying to actually maneuver it. <laughs> there's, there's nothing I. Let's see. So I read in the in the comments on the ship that the maximum thrust of this is according to like Star Trek lore, like warp one. So it's technically going light speed. So that you can apparently get to the sun in just a few seconds. Well, I will point it to the sun. Uh, let me just point it back to the planet and see if I can uh, get back. <laughs> yes. That's, that's not the, how it works, but okay. Point, point it directly back at <laughs> yeah, the ship that powerful? I think you can yeah, just you, uh, I you might be zero out your velocity, it. aim it in the general direction of the planet, and thrust. <laughs> and eventually the uh, newspapers are going to have though. quite the story. <laughs> Look at that, you can see it moving at well, one It'll be interesting point. to see how your game deals with this ship moving at relativistic speeds and then impacting a planet. <laughs> Alright, so while Landon's doing this, we are getting some questions in, and so we can start answering some of these. <clears throat> or are you guys, you guys going to start fielding them? Um, so the first one was, uh, resource systems uh, was a rumored to be near completion around patch 2.20. Is there any more progression towards a, a vanilla system, or is it backburnered? Well, the resources system, as it was designed back then, is kind of in the back burner right now because we've made a couple of uh, big decisions about the, the way the game was supposed to be developing. So um, we realized that at whoa, that is... Uh... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> abort! 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 abort. <laughs> Everything's good. Sun for a second. Did you attached. actually... Wow. You dodged it. You skipped off the atmosphere. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it is so hard to control. It is so hard to control. Oh, look inside. Oh, man. <laughs> Left the emergency slide rule in the bottom right cabinet, BK. P.S. I ate all the snacks. <laughs> look at the speed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Felipe, you're saying about the resource. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still uh, in awe at what I just saw. Um, so, yeah, um, basically, we decided that the game needed, uh, we needed to be focusing on career mode um, first and foremost. So, this is why resources have been pushed back to, um, to later on in development because. Um, we felt that uh, resources was just the kind of thing that would uh, uh, just in the way that I said before that career mode is aimed towards easing the entry barrier for new players to get into the game. Resources was just the sort of thing that would make it even uh, like way harder. Yeah, yeah. it was actually going to increase the entry barrier. So we were very worried about that and we had to make the, the decision that uh, it was a bit of a hard decision because we were actually looking forward to it as well uh, to uh, postpone resources and do career mode first. And I think it's a really cool thing that we did because just now we're getting all these new ideas and they're actually going to uh, change the way we even look at resources in the future as well. So I think it was a good call and, uh, and there's a lot of new cool things coming in the near future for the game. So uh, how, how often so do yeah. you guys want to kind of like continue doing patches? Because uh, th it's been a while since the last patch, right? <clears throat> this is a pretty major release for you guys. Sorry, I missed the start of the question. But... How, how often do you guys want to continue doing patches for this? How often as in how long? Or, or uh, when, how, frequently. how frequently? How frequently. Well, um, we try to put out a, a new update as uh, every few months or so, but there's no um, rigid uh, scheduling on them. We, we prefer to not... Uh, divulge uh, release dates and stuff like that right. until we have uh, until we're reasonably sure that we have something that uh, yeah. that works and okay. is not going to break the game for everyone so uh, but yeah we also try as much as possible to make sure that uh, well that one's going much better huh? it's a little <laughs> bit smaller sure easier to we, control let it we, we don't let too much time go by without an update either. Yeah, we're always trying to like balance it and uh, trying to. On that same note, uh, another question was: Has there been any discussion yet for what you want to like? What could what could be included in point two three? 
Uh, yeah, definitely. That's been actually the topic of uh, all of uh, this week, in fact. We're, yeah, we're uh, in pretty much in planning mode right now. Anything you <laughs> want to tease or hint at? or? Well, um, I can say that um, the original plan uh, was to continue forward with career mode and add uh, everything else, like contracts and budgets. Mm. But we, after doing research and development, we felt that uh, it was a, we, we needed to take at least one update to take care of the details that were still left pending and uh, make sure that uh, the research part of career mode is done as well as it can be. Right. So uh, we're on the point twenty three update, you can expect uh, new improvements to research and development. Uh, mm. For instance, uh, the whole thing where uh, right now you're able to just repeat and experiment again and again for uh, more science is going away, so don't count on it. Yeah. Uh, a valid strategy for too long. Awesome. And uh, and a lot of other uh, little things that were, um, uh, at least for me, were left pending for far too long. And uh, it's... Uh, uh, they're a little in the sense of, uh, in, compared to uh, the next step to, in career mode, which would be uh, budgets and contracts and all that, but still, they're very uh, cool things that... Uh, Mm -hmm. We're going to announce really soon, so... Uh, so, I mean, I guess with that then, like, since you can't repeat the same experiment, there's going to be more ways of doing science <clears> in space <throat> or gathering data. Yeah, that too. Uh, it's not that you can't repeat it. You, you can still repeat experiments. But now, uh, right now, if you transmit an experiment and it gives you, like, 20% of its science value, you can just transmit it again, assuming you have enough electric power to do it, and continue doing it until you max it out. Mm. So uh, now we're we've changed that a bit. So uh, if you uh, if transmitting it limits you to twenty percent of the science value, uh, <clears throat> you're not gonna get more than twenty percent out of the uh, full science value of that scientific experiment. Okay. So there's always gonna be more value in recovering it afterwards. So for instance, even if you transmitted the data from a surface sample of the moon 20 times the first time you recover it you're still going to get new science out of it so right that's going to be interesting i think yeah and that's, that's, that's just awesome. one small tweak yeah that I, i'm actually able to talk about before we publish the uh the dev blog with the uh everything that's coming up for uh, the next update awesome. there's going to be uh, a lot of uh, really cool things a lot of uh things that we're uh on the to-do list for a very long time, and I think people are gonna like what, uh, awesome. what we have planned. Yeah. Sweet. And then uh, the, the the last question that I got um, <clears throat> was, will there ever be a final version of KSB? I mean, in other words, like, is this something where you guys foresee yourself at some point moving away from and going into a new project and kind of putting the pin on it and saying, "Yep, this is all of KSB," and now we're gonna move on to the next project? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think that uh, KSB is. It, it, there is an end to it eventually. We're not nearly there yet, but uh, <laughs> but uh, there will be a point where we where we were gonna look at the game and be uh, and feel happy about what it uh, about the state it's in and be able to say, well, that's KSP. So we're moving on to the next project, and maybe it's not even. Uh, but it's really really soon to talk about it right, right. now. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just getting started with career mode. Right. So, That's awesome, though. Uh, I think it's really exciting. I'm happy to finally have checked it out and played it, and really happy that you guys took time to come and join us on our stream. And I'm looking forward to eventually in the in the future when we can actually sit down and record a, a proper show for our podcast with you guys. <laughs> so I guess for those who are, I guess for the people who haven't uh, been to Big Sushi FM, uh, what we just for like us, but we we host interviews, we host conversations like this with developers like you know Felipe and, and Chad, and just to kind of talk about all the cool stuff that goes into making their games. And I have to say thank you so much, guys, for joining us tonight. Oh, thanks for having us, Harvey. Yeah, and yeah, anytime you. if you guys ever want to do this again, I will gladly. Yes, I think next time I think <laughs> I'll stream because that way I can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Landon, nothing against you, of course. Yeah, hey, Landon, you're, Landon, building. you're doing great. Landon, you're doing fantastic. You're Thanks, doing guys. I, I knew everybody would appreciate all of this hard work that I put into building crappy <laughs> spacecrafts. <laughs> Build them unique. 
Yeah. It's better than crap. Yeah. yeah, unique yes. spacecraft. Unique interpretations <laughs> of spacecraft. But uh, no, I'm really excited for the game. The Kerbal Space <laughs> Program is awesome. I'm sure most people in the chat have already played it and are enjoying it. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see what you guys are moving forward with it because uh, I think what you guys are doing now is definitely a lot of the fears that I had, and you guys are going to be answering all of them. So I think that's Ooh. great. Uh oh, Landon. No, oh, well, there you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think this is going to do it, guys. Yeah, so if you, again, to... uh, it was real quick. Where can everyone go for the new updates? So you have, you guys are big on Reddit, right? You guys have, you guys have communities all over the place. Yes, we do, and I try to uh, keep them all posted. As soon as that new dev vlog is up, it's going to be blasted everywhere. Our Facebook, our Reddit, our Twitter, everywhere that's a decently sized KSP community, you'll know about it immediately, and then you can read about what's coming in the next update. Excellent. That's awesome. That's really this is a, this is a cool rocket. Yeah, this is Lane, this did you right. this? Lane, yeah. this, is <laughs> this was just one of the ones that I could load in. Oh. And that's actually one of mine. Whoa. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so you start getting ideas on how to actually make good ones by going in and seeing what everybody else has made. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, again, uh, I think this will be a great place to sign off and thanks again. Thanks so much guys. Yeah, thanks. Thank for you very much. Yeah, Our Thank pleasure. You. Good night, nerds. Good night and good luck. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.